Well, hello, Canadian Campaholic here. Uh, today, I thought I'd talk a little bit about loading your trailer safely. Uh, I was out driving the other day, and I saw a gentleman with a half-ton truck similar to ours. He was towing a trailer that was probably in excess of 34 feet long. And uh, I'll save my opinion of whether or not that's a safe idea for another video. This is not going to be a towing debate video. But um, the trailer had the nose really, really high in the air, and the back end of the trailer was really low, and it was fishtailing all over the place. And he probably didn't have a proper weight distribution hitch, but just as importantly, he probably didn't load the trailer correctly. So today, I thought we'd spend a little bit of time talking about how to safely load your trailer uh, to make your camping experience uh, safer. So the first piece of advice, of course, when it comes to loading the trailer before you even start putting any kind of cargo or belongings in the trailer is to get yourself a good weight distribution hitch. Uh, I've talked on the channel about the uh, fact that we use a Blue Ox Sway Pro weight distribution hitch. Um, there's a lot of steps, of course, to using those hitches, to setting them up so that everything rides level. You basically want the trailer to be riding down the road as level as possible behind your tow vehicle. Um, you don't want it too nose heavy because uh, it's going to push down on the rear axle of your tow vehicle. That's going to cause some stability issues. Um, but the bigger risk is if you load it uh, too much to the rear and don't use a weight distribution hitch at all, and uh, the, the trailer can start to fish tail and sway all over the place and get into high winds, it could cause an accident. So the first concept that we're going to talk about, some people call this the 60-40 uh, the, the rule. Uh, but basically what they're talking about is if we come over here and take a look at this trailer here, this is ours. The 60-40 rule basically dictates that when you're loading everything inside the trailer, and when I mean say everything, I mean everything. Pots and pans, cutlery, um, laundry, uh, any supplies or equipment that you're going to be bringing with you for your camping trip, that's all going to contribute towards the cargo carrying capacity of this trailer and has to be considered in terms of safety. So what the 60-40 rule basically is saying is try to have about 60% of the weight either at the axle or even preferably spread from the axle to the front of the camper. At the very most, you only want about 40% of that cargo behind the axle. And again, the big reason for that is if you have too much weight behind the axle, it's going to cause the trailer to start fishtailing and swaying and moving all over the road, which is very, very dangerous. I see a lot of people using fairly light tow vehicles that although they are capable of pulling that weight, if they start getting a trailer fishtailing, it, it could be cause uh, for an accident. Now, something else that you should be considering as you're you know, loading up all your stuff in your trailer is what is your trailer actually rated to carry? And on most new rigs, you get one of these yellow telltale stickers just inside the door. And what this is basically telling us is that the um, cargo carrying capacity of this particular trailer is 419 kilograms or about 923 pounds. Now, 923 pounds sounds like a lot, and it's a decent amount of cargo carrying capacity, but something that it's pointing out on here is that a full load of water in this rig will weigh 166 kilos or 365 pounds. So if you're gonna be traveling down the road with your 40 gallon fresh water tank full, that is counting towards that cargo carrying capacity. So really, you really, really need to keep that in mind. Um, a lot of people look at this dry weight, which in this case is 2,945 pounds. So that's the weight that the trailer weighed when it rolled off the assembly line with no extra bits and pieces in it. People see that number and they think, oh, I got tons and tons of space for cargo in here. Well, you do, but again, you're limited to that 923 pounds. Um, and we're not suggesting, and I'm not suggesting, that you go and weigh every single thing that you're putting in the trailer, but just be mindful of that, especially when it comes to the holding tanks. Now, when it comes to holding tanks, just to say a little more on that concept, um, on average, uh, liquid in a holding tank, uh, you're going to get about eight pounds uh, for every gallon that you're carrying. So again, we've got a fresh water tank here that holds 40 gallons. So you're looking at about 360 pounds if that tank is full. Um, we've got a gray tank and a black tank. They're each 20 gallons. So uh, you're looking at approximately half of that weight in each of those, those tanks. So that's something to consider. But the other thing is the positioning of the tanks because that can really do a lot to determine the stability of your camper. Now, um, can't really 
show you too well on our camper today, but if we crouch down, this white part here, this is our freshwater holding tank. And you'll notice that it's almost directly over the axle, which is fantastic because if you've got weight over the axle, that's gonna help stabilize the trailer and really weight, if you're gonna put weight anywhere in a camper, the axle is the, really one of the best places to have it. So that's fantastic. Now, this is great. On my camper, I can see the tank underneath. This might not always be possible though. If you've got one with the heated enclosed underbelly, you might not be able to see precisely where your tanks are. I can also tell you though, that on our rig, the gray tank and the black tank are behind the axle. So in the case of my camper, I would be very, very careful and cautious about ever towing this thing down the road with those uh, rear tanks completely full. The only time we've ever done that is at the end of a camping trip where the fresh water tank is just about empty and the gray and the black tanks are just about full. And we have very carefully driven through the campgrounds to the dump station but if you can avoid it, I wouldn't recommend doing that on the highway. Again, that's a lot of weight. If you've got both the gray and the black full, that's nearly 400 pounds of weight behind the axles. I wouldn't say that it's outright dangerous necessarily, but if you're not experienced with towing, if you start getting into some high winds, if you don't have the right hitch, if your tow vehicle is really not that robust, um, then that could be cause for problems. Um, but for your own camper, check out where your tanks are because that will definitely give you an idea of what your stability is going to be like. The other quick tip that I'll give you is if you are thinking of towing to your campsite, let's say you're going to be boondocking and you want to fill that fresh water tank. If you're going to fill it, make sure, see this is our gravity fill for the fresh water tank. Most of these will have like a little vent here. So this cover is the main pipe that covers the main pipe that goes into the tank to fill it with fresh water. This little vent here is a separate plastic tube that goes into the top of the tank to allow air to pass in, but also if you overfill the tank, water is going to shoot out of that vent. I would recommend when you're filling this fresh water tank before you hit the road to fill it to a point that you do get some water coming out of the vent. The reason for that is if you have a lot of air space in that fresh water tank and you're bouncing down the road and going around corners, there's a risk that that water is going to start sloshing around. And when you've got nearly 350, 360 pounds of water sloshing around, that is not a good thing because now you're not just dealing with the weight, but you're dealing with the weight shifting. If the tank is absolutely filled to the brim, then really that water doesn't have anywhere to slosh around inside the tank. I know it's a little counterintuitive, but yes, um, from talking to more uh, expert RVers than me, they said that having that tank absolutely full to the brim is going to be a key to helping um, with that, that stability. And if you don't need to fill it at home and you can fill at the campsite, then leave the tank empty and just fill it uh, at the campsite. So we're inside the camper now, um, and let's talk about loading things inside the camper, because a lot of people don't want to have a whole bunch of cargo and equipment and stuff inside their tow vehicle. That's a nuisance. Um, and also some folks don't want to have to keep, you know, loading and unloading their camper every time that they go camping. They want to keep as much of the stuff in here as possible. When it comes to loading it, again, remember what we mentioned earlier about the 60-40 rule. I'm approximately above the axle here. So if I was loading things here inside the camper, um, two things. One, you want them, of course, as much of the weight ahead of the axle as possible. But the second point is you want to keep the heavy things as low as possible. So I've got this bin sitting up here on the bunk. This is kind of a kitchen bin. We don't really cook in the camper much. We cook outside under the awning. So I've got things in here like plates and some pots and pans and some odds and ends. You wouldn't want something, this isn't too heavy, but you wouldn't want something heavy sitting up on the bunks like this, for example. One, it could fall off in transit and it could damage something, but secondly, too much weight high up uh, makes the, the camper a lot less stable. You've got lots of nice inviting cupboards in a lot of campers, lockers, cupboards, whatever you want to call them. Again, they're very high up, so don't overload these with a lot of weight. Partly because, as I've shared in other videos, some of these campers are not always built that well. And if you have too much weight up here, you run the risk of the entire cabinet ripping out of the wall, which would be a disaster. So in this particular cabinet, we've got some toilet paper, we've got some, some cleaning products, 
a bug screen for the baby stroller and a, and a dust buster, but we don't really keep anything else much heavier than that. Uh, this cupboard over here, again, it's high up. You might be tempted to load a bunch of stuff in it. This one, we keep blankets and hammocks and pillows and things up here. Again, keep it nice and light. If we pan to the right here under this messy bed, this does lift up and there's a bunch of storage underneath the bed. Great place to store stuff under there. We've got uh, fire pokers and an extra sewer hose and we've got a uh, an outside kitchen tent and we've got a, um, a sunroom all packed up under there and all kinds of tools and bits and pieces uh, that we can access through the outside storage. This is ahead of the axle. It's nice and low. Uh, and again, it's going to help with that um, stability. Um, in terms of like your kitchen cupboards, I mean, you can have food in your, in your fridge if your fridge is uh, set up to go. Um, Again, it's nice and low, so not, not a huge, huge deal. We've got some lower cupboards here where you could put some things that are a little heavier. But in your pantry up here, we put a lot of our food items in this cupboard when we're on site at the campsite. But as soon as we leave, we try to, to keep this, this place uh, fairly clear. Um, we've got a couple of cups in here and a few bits and pieces. Um, things don't tend to shift and move around a lot in the cupboard, but something else that you might want to consider with cargo is maybe some of those uh, little grippy mat things that you can get in the dollar stores to stop things shifting. But again, the key point I want to uh, speak to here is not to have too much weight high up. Back here, we've got a, a pantry. Now we're getting to the rear of the axle now, but I do have somewhere in here um, some cast iron pots and pans. I'm not going to take them out, but I've kept them in this pantry, and again, you'll notice I've got them situated in the camper uh, nice and nice and low, again, for that stability. If you're going to bring a bunch of totes and bins, that's fine, but really recommend that you try to put them on the floor. Now, I know that's frustrating because you don't always have a lot of floor space in these rigs. If you've got slide outs and the slide outs are in for travel, you'll have even less room, but ultimately it's about being safe and getting to the campground in one piece. So you want to have, again, lots of stuff. If you're going to load it in, load it as low to the floor as possible and try to keep as much of it to the front of the axle as possible. Now, again, that doesn't mean to say you can't load anything in the rear of the camper. But again, think back to the start of the video when we talked about that 60-40 split, approximately 60% of your cargo axle forward and then the 40% uh, further back. So I think we'll uh, we'll keep this video nice and short and start to wrap things up. Um, you know, I think this is an important topic to share. There's a lot of folks getting into camping now because of the pandemic. It's getting hard to travel once again, thanks to Omicron. Um, but if you know you're like us, we, when we travel, we take just about everything except the kitchen sink because we have our own kitchen sink. But we we bring everything. You know, all of our toiletries, our clothing pots and pans, every utensil under the sun. We probably bring more stuff than we necessarily need. Uh, we used to load a lot of it in the bed of the truck, uh, but we've lately for convenience started to load the camper. But again, we've got to do that safely because the last thing you want is for your investment, your precious trailer uh, to get trashed or even worse, you and your loved ones uh, being injured. So um, if you have tips and advice on cargo carrying capacity and, and safety, please go ahead and pop those down in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please do subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Hope you guys have had a very happy holiday and uh, let's all look forward to the 2022 camping season. We'll talk to you later.